Hello chemists and welcome to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the basic structure of the atom and how to calculate the relative atomic mass. This is the atomic structure topic, which is 1.1 of the AQA A-level chemistry specification. This topic appears mostly on paper one, but it's fundamental to all the chemistry you're going to study. So we're all probably very familiar with the basic structure of the atom, with the nucleus in the middle containing the protons and the neutrons, and the electrons orbiting the nucleus on shells or orbitals. We often represent these electron shells or orbitals with a series of rings, with two electrons on the first shell and eight on each shell afterwards. Whilst we're going to go on to adopt a different model for the atom in our A-levels, this is a simplified model which is still useful in certain situations. All the subatomic particles also have different relative charges and relative masses, and it's important that we can recall them throughout our studies. The periodic table provides a lot of information to chemists. The position of the elements in the table, along with the information shown in the square, can help us to predict the size of each element and how it will react. There are two main pieces of information inside each square on the periodic table. The relative atomic mass, this is the mass of the protons and the neutrons added together. This mass is an average of the isotopes present for the element on Earth, and the measurement is taken relative to the mass of a carbon-12 atom. The atomic number is the smaller of the two numbers and is the number of protons present in the nucleus. This is equal to the number of electrons on the atom. However, it's important that we remember this number is a measurement of the protons in the nucleus when it comes to answering exam questions. The number is also what identifies the element, as all atoms of the same element will have the same number of protons. The periodic table orders elements based on their atomic number. It's very important that you're able to recall a definition for the relative atomic mass, as it's often asked in exam questions. Here we define the relative atomic mass as the mean mass of an atom relative to 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. The term isotope was first suggested by Scottish doctor Margaret Todd in 1913 and stems from the Greek word isos meaning equal and topos meaning place. As different isotopes of an element occupy the same place on a periodic table. 83 out of the 118 elements on the periodic table have stable isotopes. Isotopes of the same element have different mass numbers. This means that they have the same number of protons as it's the number of protons which makes an atom a specific element. They do, however, have a different number of neutrons, which is what changes their relative atomic mass. Isotopes of an element all have the same number of electrons. This means that isotopes have the same chemical properties as each other, as it's the number and position of electrons which influence the chemical reactions. Whilst you don't need to be able to recall any examples of isotopes, it can be helpful to have a few to hand. There are three common isotopes of hydrogen. Proteum, which is a normal hydrogen containing only one proton. Deuterium, which contains one proton and now one neutron and tritium, which contains one proton and two neutrons. When it comes to calculating the relative atomic mass, we need to look at the abundances of each isotope present. The abundance is the quantity or the amount of an isotope present in the sample, and can be shown as either a percentage or as a ratio. We can then use this equation to calculate the relative atomic mass. The top line of this equation could be expanded, adding in more masses if there are more isotopes. If the abundance is given as a percentage, then the total number of atoms will be 100. However, if they're given as a ratio, you need to add up the abundances for each isotope to reach a total. This is an easy one to miss in an exam. In this first example, abundance is given as a ratio. We use the equation taking the total abundance to be 28, which gives a relative atomic mass for lithium to be 6.9. In the second example, abundance is given as a percentage. This time, the total abundance is going to be 100, and we can calculate the relative atomic mass to be 35.5. That's it for this episode on the Atom. If you found the video useful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up below and remember to check back for more useful videos next week. Thanks for watching.